I'm Suzanne, and I'm the sub. I'm the sub team lead for team number three. Um, on paper, we're team number three, but in spirit, we are team number one. Um, we were. <laughs> <laughs> we were very proud of ourselves when we found out this morning that we were the first team to have sign off on all of our submissions. So we consider ourselves to be the kings and queens of Convo. <laughs> so um, here you will see our um, standard work combination sheet with our track time. Uh, we plan to have this done in 20 minutes, and just for those of you who are those of you who are wondering why Andrew gets so much time at the end, we unfortunately have a team member who was not able to attend today, and so Andrew is doing her section as well. It's not just because he likes to talk. <laughs> so I'd love to introduce our wonderful team. Um, our team lead is Andrew from Trias Health. Our vendor a representative is Colin from Sean Healthcare. Our KPO support person is Cynthia. Uh, materials management from Prince Albert is Eddie. Our process owner from Level 4 Surgical Unit is Sheila. Um, we have Melissa from the Surgical Unit. We have Sherry from Health Quality Council. And Jeff from Prairie North Health Region. And then myself from 3S Health. So our next uh, page is our project form. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this because it was discussed by Andrew at our session on Monday. I will just point out that for the surgical unit, our focus was cart B and cart F in the supply room as well as removing inventory from patient rooms. Those were our three targets this week. So I will turn this over to Colin. Thank you. So um, just a bit of a review here um, of our, uh, our target area, the layout of the supply room up on the surgical ward. Um, we uh, uh, reconfigured or climbed on two carts, cart B and cart F, uh, one of them being a general med surge cart and the other one being a wound care dressing cart. And the process for ordering and replenishing the supplies was uh, quite complex, uh, of course, before we started. So uh, three different processes that, that existed, um, uh, depending on the type of item it was. But uh, green label items uh, are checked by materials management um, two times a week. And um, uh, the orders are picked and, and materials management brings the product back up to the shelves uh, and puts the product away. Uh, the other two processes are very similar. Um, one of them is a green dot items, um, which indicated stock items down in stores. And um, uh, there was a bit of a, uh, from the uh, FIDAS uh, project that was done in December, a bit of a, a hybrid Kanban system going already, so that was nice to see. But the, in the process that the nurses ordered the supplies uh, from materials management, uh, the orders were picked, uh, brought back up to the nursing station, and the nurses were stocking the shelves and putting the product away. Uh, very similar process existed for the red dot items, which were non-stock items, but in a similar fashion. Okay. So here we have um, two of our carts. This is cart, uh, I believe, F. Now, this cart was 5S. It looks what you think not too bad. Um, this is the top of a cart, and then we've shown you both the top and the bottom of both our carts. This is the bottom of um, cart F as well. Um, as you can see, there's lots of material, lots of dressing supplies. Uh, this is cart B that had all of the, there was dividers, and it, this also had been 5S only a little while ago, so still lots of stuff that could come off of there. This is the top, and then we have a bottom one as well. Um, now, as you can see there too, there's lots and lots of things down at that end. So, with that, this is pre. Um, going on to the target progress report. Um, so with card F and card B, um, just looking, I'm not going to go through all of it, but just the inventory part. With card F, there was about 2,642 items. And our target was to get it down to 1,000. 1,321, which would be about 50% reduction um, with Card F. Uh, Card F also had, we had about $4,000.74, right down to the cents. 
and we with a target of 2037 cents, which about 50 50% reduction. Um, so with that, and going just through the rest of our progress reports, we've gone through the walking distance, traveling part, lead time, and quality time there. So it's um, lots from part F and part B. Hello. Uh, this is our <coughs> Kanban setup sheet. Uh, we had two versions. Uh, this was the final version. Uh, we had a, a couple of variables on here. Uh, most notably, uh, the lead time was three days. That was just to allow for weekends. Uh, the buffer rate, we chose 30% across the board, but that's uh, adjustable moving forward depending on what, what happens. We used uh, uh, a function, or we added a column uh, in yellow there, which was our actual numbers uh, for stocking the two bin system that we used. And we uh, used a round up function on that just to, uh, to get it even. And you can see the bottom totals there uh, will be compared to the, uh, the number of items and move over to the price. You can see this second page. You can see the price column over to the right. Yeah, you see the price is down at the bottom there. Some will be speaking to that the actual differences that we came up with. So I am going to um, show you some. So this is pre, um, pre five dancing. Five is not high. were some of the ideas that we came up with when we were brainstorming. So one of the things was we wanted to make everything easier to reach so that nurses aren't reaching so high on the carts or uh, materials management having to put those away. And, um, we realized we were putting a lot of supplies in our stock room and then we were taking supplies from the stock room to replenish in other places and that's just a waste of time. So we wanted to get rid of that. And um, we realized, you know, nurses just, they had no real, we had no process of getting stock. So um, hopefully we made that a little better and a little less waste. Okay, this is, um, this is just after we finished 5 Sing. So we 5 S the cart and then, this is more 5 Sing. This is the patient's rooms. That's what we started with on Monday. So that's an actual patient's room we walked into and just took pictures of the dressing supplies being left at the back of the room. This is all the stuff we picked up walking around room to room that we just found sitting around. This is what we think the patient's lead should be used for. <laughs> And these are our time observation sheets we did. So we did area replenishments. Um, we did uh, replenishing checks. Completing the requisitions. Uh, requisitions sent, so this is just a spaghetti diagram, so basically our war clerks were walking to do requisitions. And this is a uh, requisition for non-stock items, so we originally had three different types of order. This is what it looks like now. So this is, um, this is today. Go, go. Uh, 
So even though we had an incredible amount of work done during the week by this fantastic team, there's still uh, some items that are remaining uh, to do. So we've created a newspaper to track those items that still need to be done. Uh, so I'll just walk through them quickly. Uh, we need to provide a, a, a cart for the wound care registered nurse. Uh, we need to um, have a way of coordinating uh, some of the items that are seldomly used. We would like to do that centrally. We need to return two very full carts of non-needed non -needed items back to stores, so we're going to get a, a nice credit for our department. And uh, we need to find uh, bins of, of different sizes to actually reduce shelf space a little bit more, and we want to convert those to plastic. We want to select some audit metrics and assign an audit leader to make sure that we maintain the gains that we've achieved. Uh, we need to purchase some totes for the nurses so that they can use those to carry supplies to and from the patient rooms. And we want to make sure that our orientation is completed. And we've actually created an orientation checklist, which we'll show you next, which has uh, each staff person's name, as well as the two new processes that they need to be oriented to. As far as the summary goes, we have a number of uh, lessons learned that we'd like to share with everyone. First of all, we really felt that the pre-established culture of improvement on the surgery floor was really helpful to, to gain acceptance into the changes that we made. So work that they did with releasing time to care really set the stage to make this successful. Secondly, we had a meeting with the staff partly through the week and explained the changes that we were hoping to make, the improvements that we were working on, and uh, I really think that helped uh, with the buy-in, and it was really obvious from their body language and what they said that they were excited about the improvements that we were making. Um, for, for people that continue on with this work, I think it'd be important to have um, lots of you know, different sizes of bands ready so that they're, they're, they're ready to use them and certainly moving to plastic uh, bins will help. We were uh, really happy to leverage an idea that the nurses had had previously of putting the price of each item uh, on the bins and we really thought that would help raise the awareness of the cost of different supply choices. And uh, we also thought it was important to have standardized processes and provide, provide training to staff around what the new standard work would be on the unit. Other lessons learned, uh, the importance of the data collection was, was a big one. And we were really lucky that in advance of the week we had uh, counted all of the inventory, so we had that already built into our spreadsheets. If we hadn't done that, I think it would have cost us a lot of hours of work and set us behind. Um, we also wanted to say that it was great to see the diversity of the different people in our, in our teams and the different skills and perspectives that they brought together. And, and you just can't um, underestimate the importance of teamwork. And, and I, I've got to say, this is just one of the greatest teams that I've ever had a chance to work with. It was really good. Um, other learnings, I think it, it's really important that people have a good understanding of what's going to happen ahead of time. And our simulation was, was you know, one of the sort of tougher parts for us in the week, the first time we tried it. It's just we, did, we weren't really prepared for what we would need to do to have a successful simulation. And last but not least, and no surprise, communication is really important. We have another number of achievements that we want to highlight from our team. First of all, the fact that nurses no longer need to place orders of supplies, they don't need to stock shelves, that's just a huge improvement. <laughs> Secondly, we've reduced three different processes to one. We've implemented uh, processes to take those supplies out of the patient rooms other than patient-specific supplies. And we've also improved the back order process so the staff know if we're out of a product, when the product's expected to arrive, and that they're not reordering. We were finding nurses were reordering and reordering and reordering, and then we were getting about 10 times uh, more than what we needed. Some other achievements, and I just want to highlight some of these numbers uh, for everyone. We reduced the number of SKUs or specific products by 40, and that's a 33% reduction in the, in the types of supplies that needed to be maintained. Although we increased items on the cart by 776 combined, which was a 6% increase, it's important for people to understand that we actually had to add 6,800 sponges because they were, they were out of stock when, when, we, when we started. And that we actually would have achieved our 50% reduction 
if it hadn't been for adding 6,800 sponges at a whopping cost of $40. Uh, the second piece is the, the reduction in the value of the inventory. So we were able to reduce $3,879 worth of inventory. That's a 77% reduction in inventory that needed to be maintained. Can you imagine if we multiplied across the entire province a 77% reduction in inventory, what we could do in better providing care to patients? I think that would be incredible, and I can hardly wait for us all collectively to achieve that. <laughs> um, it was also interesting that um, you know our goal at the start of the week was to have a 100% reduction in, in the time for nursing to place order and, and, and unpack orders on shelves. And we were able to achieve that. And we were a little bit worried about the extra workload that that might add uh, for the materials management people. But it was interesting through the simulations uh, and, and tracking the time difference, we really reduced the amount of time specifically that, that uh, the Mountain Man people needed to count items and check inventory levels on a daily basis, uh, actually twice a week. So that was an 81% reduction in their time. So all in all, we were able to reduce the workload for the material management people in that process by 17%, and for the nurses, 100%. So our last comment uh, in, our, in our summary would be, it's amazing how small changes can make a really big difference. I want, I want to say some, some thank yous. Uh, uh, of course, thank you to, to my team for just being so fantastic to work with. And uh, I'll share my home address. <laughs> okay, that's creepy. But what is it, Andrew? <laughs> it's uh, uh, two miles uh, east of Regina. <laughs> So uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Sensei and the interpreter for, for sharing, uh, John, for sharing your wisdom with us this week. We, we really appreciate that. I want to say thank you to the nursing staff and physicians, and, and as was mentioned earlier, particularly the patients and their families for, for uh, their, their patients as we were in their way and, and uh, were dodging and weaving to do our work. Um, I want, want to say a special thank you to materials management and Eddie uh, in particular. Uh, for their willingness to, to, to support change and to help us do our work here. That was just fantastic. As well as people from the print shop, maintenance, and IT for providing your support. We couldn't, couldn't have done this without you either. Um, also want to say thank you to Prince Albert Parkland Health Region Cecile. Just can't say how much we appreciate you and your team hosting us, and taking us in, and uh, letting us learn along with you. Um, it's just been an incredible experience. We've got a great culture in this organization, and, and it was just it's really great to get on the gamble and, and be part of that. Um, <laughs> I told Andrew to thank you for buying us these shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and that, last but not least, I, I want to say thank you to the vendors for being here this week. Um, you know, Colin was part of our team, and man, what a great addition to the work that you're doing. All right, that concludes our presentation.